Now here we have an expression containing three terms a plus b plus c. So let us square this expression. We can write it as a plus b plus c into a plus b plus c. Now using the distributive property we can expand it as a times a plus b plus c plus b times a plus b plus c plus c times a plus b plus c. So we have distributed this expression over this expression. Now a is multiplied with the entire expression. So a is multiplied with this entire expression. This means that a is multiplied with each term of the expression. So we can write it as a into a, a square. a into b is ab. a into c is ac. b into a is ba. b into b is b square. b into c is bc. c into a is ca. c into b is cb. And c into c is c square. So this is what we get by expanding this. Now let us simplify this further. So we have an a square term here. So let us write a square. We have a b square term here. So let us write b square. We have a c square term here plus c square. Now we have an ab term and we have a b a term. So these two are like terms. So we can combine these two. a b plus b a is 2 a b. We have an a c term here and a c a term here. Again are these like terms or not? Yes, they are like terms. So we can combine these two to get 2 a c. What is left? We are left with b c and c b. Given that these two are like terms, we get 2 b c. So we get a square plus b square plus c square plus 2 a b plus 2 b c plus 2 c a. So this is a special identity. Now whenever you need to square an expression containing three terms, you can directly apply this identity without following these steps. So this is a very important identity and you should remember it. Now we need to find the square of 139. So how do we find it? Well one method is 139 into 139. So it is by normal multiplication which we have been doing till now. But now we have learned this identity. So can we apply this identity to make this calculation simpler? Let's see. We have a 139 square here and we have a plus b plus c whole square here. So there is a square term here and there is a square term here. So if we can represent this 139 as a plus b plus c then we can use this identity. So 139 can be written as 100 plus 30 plus 9. So we can write 139 as 100 plus 30 plus 9. In this case, 100 becomes A, 30 becomes B and 9 becomes C. And then we can apply this identity. Can you make it even more simpler? Think about it. Remember, that this is an identity. So it is true for all values of a, b and c. So it is true for negative values of a, b and c as well. So if we write 139 as 100 plus 40 plus negative 1. 
100 plus 40 plus negative 1 also gives us 139. Now, multiplying with negative 1, finding the square of negative 1 is much simpler as compared to multiplying with 9 and finding the square of 9. So, if we use these values as A, B and C, then our calculations become even more easier. So, we'll use this. So, let us represent 139 square as 100 plus 40 plus negative 1 whole square. Now here, 100 is A, 40 is B and negative 1 is C. Remember, negative 1 is C. It's not 1, it's negative 1. So when we expand it, we have A square, so we write 100 square. We have B square, so we write 40 square. We have C square, so we write negative 1 square. We have a plus 2AB, so we write 2, A is 100, B is 40. We have 2BC, so we write 2, B is 40 and C is negative 1. And we have 2CA, so we write 2, negative 1 into 100. So this is what we have. A square plus B square plus C square plus 2AB plus 2BC plus 2CA. And the rest is quite simple. 100 square is 1 followed by 4 zeros which is 10,000. 40 square is 16, 100, negative 1 square is 1, 2 into 100 into 40. Now 2 into 100 is 200, into 40 is 8 followed by 3 zeros, 2 into 40 into negative 1 here. So we have a negative 1, so plus Minus, we get a negative sign. 2 into 40 is 80. 2 into negative 1 into 100. So we have a negative sign here. So we get a negative here. 2 into 100 is 200. So this is what we have. And we can combine these now. We have 10,000. So 10,000. 1,600 plus 8,000. Now we have already taken 10,000. 1,600 plus 8,000. 9,600. We get 19,600. We have minus 80, minus 200. We get minus 280. So we get 1, 9, 3, 2, 0. And a plus 1 is left. So we add a 1, 1, 9, 3, 2, 1. So this is what we have. Now wasn't it much simpler than calculating the square of 139 by normal multiplication? Yes, it was not only simpler but even faster. Now notice that here we have used a negative number in place of C. So C could be negative as well. So let us see what do we have if we have a minus sign in front of C. So we can write it as A square plus B square plus negative C whole square plus 2AB plus 2B into negative C plus 2 into negative C into A. So this is what we have. Now we can simplify it as a square plus b square. Negative c whole square is negative c whole square is negative 1 square into c square which is simply c square. So it is c square plus 2ab 
Now we have a minus sign here. So plus 2b into negative c gives us negative 2bc plus 2 into negative c into a gives us negative 2ca. So this is what we have. So this is what we get. This is yet another identity. Over here also a, b and c could be any numbers. Now we can have possibilities like a minus b minus c whole square. We can have a minus b plus c whole square and many more possibilities. So are you worried about remembering so many identities? Well, you need not be. Because you actually need to remember only this identity. And the others could be simply derived by replacing this minus sign as adding a negative number. So, when we have a minus sign here, we can consider that a negative number is being added. So these two are the same. We can consider that a negative number is being added and we can use this identity. So we only need to remember the first identity. Now let us solve a question here. Find A minus B plus C whole square. Now let us use our identity again. So we have, we can write it as A plus negative B plus C whole square. We can write it like this. So we'll use negative B in place of B in our identity. So we have an A square term. We have an A square term. We have a B square term. So we use negative B square in place of B square. We have C square. We have 2AB. So we write 2 into A into negative B. We have 2BC. So that becomes 2 into negative B into C. And 2CA remains 2CA. So what we get is A square. Negative B square is B square. C square remains C square. We have a negative sign here. So this becomes negative 2AB. We have a negative sign here. So this becomes negative 2BC plus 2CA. So now compare it with the options which we have. We have A square, B square, C square in all four. Now we have a negative 2AB, the negative 2AB, negative 2BC plus 2CA. So this is the correct option. Now here we need to find the square of this expression containing three terms. So let us use this identity because we have a square term here. We have a square term here. So this could be compared to A plus B plus C. How? We can write it as X plus 2Y plus negative Z whole square. So here X becomes our A. 2Y becomes B. And negative z becomes c. So we can write it as a square that is x square. b square that is 2y square. c square. So we have negative z square. 2ab. So 2 into x into 2y, 2bc, 2 into 2y into negative z plus 2ca, 2 into negative z into x. So this is the expanded form of this expression. 
so this is what we have and now we can simply calculate the squares x square 2y square is 4y square negative z square is z square 2 into x into 2y becomes 4xy 2 into 2y into negative z becomes negative 4yz and 2 into negative z into x becomes negative 2zx. So this is the final answer. So we have expanded this trinomial and found its square using this identity. So this identity is very useful and we can directly apply it whenever we have to find the square of an expression containing three terms.